Hey everybody, welcome back to the clinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, that website address is the clinicaltrialsguru.com. I've been getting lots of questions all the time. I've been so busy though, but right now I'm getting back to some of you guys. So thank you for being patient. This one is, I'll just read it to you. Hey Dan, I'm probably outside of your core audience when it comes to business. But I might as well ask. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what are the biggest recruiting and retention pain points you have in running a site. So they're actually not too far removed from the core audience. I mean, recruitment and retention is a huge topic. I'm actually going to be making a new DVD um, recruiting, all about recruiting for clinical trials. The biggest pain point, I mean, I've now positioned myself with my company, South Coast Clinical Trials and also with breakthrough clinical trials to work with providers in the local communities so when it comes to recruitment we don't have that much of a problem we have people that we work with that are seeing patients for themselves as a private practice and they have every interest to recruit for us uh, some of them are owners some of them are partners with us so that's, we don't have, I don't have a huge pain point, but I can tell you that before I partnered with people, clinicians, physicians, nurse practitioners, uh, physician assistants who had their own private practice, I did have recruiting pain points. It was just basically putting ads on Craigslist, putting ads on the radio, on TV, on newspaper, going out in the community and just door knocking or going to um, support groups for various various uh, disorders or diseases you can find those on Craigslist you can find those in the newspapers you can just google those they have forums so because we do psychiatric trials um, and depression is a big one I would go to depression support groups and just introduce myself I would probably usually schedule something beforehand with the um, support group planner, the support group moderator, so that he or she would be expecting me and I wouldn't just spring up in the middle of a support group and start talking about clinical trials. I would try to plan it out. Um, those are huge recruiting pain points. I know a lot of research clinics that do not align themselves with practitioners and they don't form these strategic relationships. They have to pay recruiters to bring them patients. So basically they're outsourcing the whole building that context and their relationship with referring physicians or having a referral network. Um, they're outsourcing that to someone or to a group who can do that for them. So if you don't align yourself with people who can refer for you, you basically are forced to spend money and outsource that and do the ads and the traditional recruitment. As far as retention, it goes back to establishing a context and relationship with these study participants. So uh, retention is a huge thing. I mean, sometimes the study stipend that the study participant gets uh, helps. Sometimes the study drug helps. If, it, if it's uh, working for them, they have the incentive to come back. If it doesn't work, if they're not doing well, um, you're not going to you're not going to find any strategy really for retention because if they're having a tough time with the drug chances are they are going to withdraw consent anyways so that's a retention pain points I mean those are always going to be common in clinical research uh, then he asks what's the hardest thing about recruiting and retaining patients in the day-to-day -day? Um, so that's kind of the same thing I mean establishing these contacts and depending on what kind of studies you do but for the most part any kind of study because clinical trials happen um, most clinics are open from 9 to 5 Monday through Friday most study participants have to work or they have their own schedules during those times so that's pretty tough and trying to, for both recruitment and retention is trying to find the people uh, while you're recruiting and then retaining them having them just keep the schedule with the clinical trial I know some clinics are open on the weekends um, but some of the lab providers are not open on the weekend, so they won't accept Saturday shipments. So um, for those of you who work in the industry, you know, like you're not going to screen a patient on a Saturday because 
the blood that you would have obtained, the the blood samples would not get there till Monday. They would uh, spoil the lab samples unless you have your own local lab. But most sites that I know ship the labs to quintiles or some other lab, and they're not open on the weekends. So that's a pain point. And as far as recruiting, I mean, it goes back to just any industry. This is the sales part of the industry, and people are afraid to be good salesmen. You either need to be that yourself or hire people and outsource that. Because at the end of the day, no matter what business you're in, it's all about sales. And if you are not good at selling, or if you're not comfortable selling, you're either going to have to get really good at it or hire people who... Um, who can do that for you and it's no different when it comes to clinical trial recruitment I mean it's uh, at the end of the day it's sales that you're convincing people to join a study um, it, you may not be selling goods or anything but you're selling the idea of joining a study which by the way you may you do not know whether that study is going to help the person or not that's another pain point when it comes to selling recruiting you don't really know if the if the study drug is going to help the patient. You don't know if they're going to get placebo. So a lot of people are kind of shy away from recruiting and tend to outsource that to other people. Um, here's another question. Did you get your real estate license recently? Yes, I did. Um, back to my thing on sales. I think I'm pretty good at sales. Um, I've done a good job in research as far as getting studies, getting physicians, getting patients, and as far as real estate, I've always had a passion for real estate. I've been a real estate investor right around the same time I started uh, the clinical trial business. So I've been involved in the real estate space as an investor, um, but I've been kind of quiet about that because I didn't have any blogs for real estate yet. But now I do. Um, I have a Keller Williams website. I work for Keller Williams um, on the days that I'm not doing clinical trials. And it, like I said a few minutes ago, sales can be translated to any industry. And I think it's a little easier to actually sell real estate than it is oftentimes to sell the idea of joining a clinical trial. Even though in real estate, people are usually spending like their life savings for that purchase. And in clinical trials, people actually get paid for joining. But oftentimes, it's a lot easier to explain the benefits of let's say buying or selling a home versus joining a clinical trial a lot a lot of work has been done in the real estate industry to explain these things in clinical trials as far as explaining research to study participants or potential study participants very little work has done has been done and I think it's our job in the industry to continue doing that I'll try to do that with the clinical trials guru and um, I will keep you anonymous, but I know who you are. You can do that with your company as well. And uh, let me know what you guys think about this video, about this topic of recruiting, retention, sales, and marketing. And I want to give a shout out to my clinical trial guru producers, Sarah Elizabeth Siegler, Resolve Research Solutions, Accurate Clinical Trials, Erdhard Clinical Trials, PTNR, Patrick Stone, Darshan Kulkarni, Biofarm Systems, Zymewire, Mozio, uh, South Coast Clinical Trials, Breakthrough Clinical Trials, and St. Paul Medical Research Center in Miami, Florida. Thank you very much. This is Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com.